Well, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. John McClain. And uh, today is the beginning of the Masters Golf Tournament. So I'm wearing my uh, Masters Golf Tournament hat and uh, have fond memories of being able to uh, attend the tournament a couple times over the years if anybody's ever going and you need somebody to come along with you I'm available but golf is one of the things that I do enjoy and uh, I do find it relaxing but uh, today we're going to talk about a topic that is uh, not particularly relaxing to a lot of people and that is uh, the question of near-death experiences and they've been around for a long long time just going to make this a little bigger so you can see me as we go along <clears throat> and uh, people have written about them and claimed them and so uh but more and more claims and theology uh and uh death death statements are being made as a result of it. And so I thought that this would be a good one to uh, briefly review. So near death or death experiences, uh, because they really don't know if the person was just very, very close to death or whether they actually died and they were resuscitated. But in my research, here are some common experiences, according to researchers, to near-death experiences. Uh, near-death experiences occur most often when a person is unconscious or comatose or under the influence of a hallucinogenic drug. It is common during a near-death experience for the person to become or to be considered clinically dead. In other words, their heart has stopped or they're not registering brain waves and uh, things like that. Uh, Near-death experience has, uh, they report an out-of-body experience in which the person feels that his or her material component has separated from his or her immaterial component. Near-death experience uh, often is uh, during a cardiac event, some kind of a heart attack or something similar. And uh, this is often due to the lack of oxygen uh, to the brain that creates other chemical reactions. Near-death experience is experienced often during general anesthesia of uh, a person having surgery. Uh, NDE often occur, includes a review of life events and, and the relationships. When the person uh, supposedly comes back from the dead or whatever that is, that they've had a review of their life experiences, events, uh, relationships with, you know, significant people in their lives. NDE has been reported in most all cultures, Western culture, Eastern culture, tribal cultures. Um, we have more information about this these days, only I would say uh, because of the increase of the internet and the increase of the medical community uh, to bring people back from death experiences. Uh, NDE experience reflects cultural influences also. In other words, many of the reports of the NDE are very much culturally, uh, and number seven, religiously uh, influenced. Uh, their reporting comes out of their religious influence. And yet it's interesting that NDE has been reported by atheists and agnostics also. Uh, so religion uh, does not uh, need to be a component of it, but it 
always seems to reflect the person's culture and religion or non-religion. Uh, Near-death experience often includes a significant change in the person's uh, life goals. In other words, it was such a profound experience that they, they're going to change relationships with people. They're going to change their goals in life. They're going to uh, move forward with uh, new things. And then uh, NDE often includes an experience with a heavenly being or what others might report as an alien. And so these are common uh, factors for it. Now, what does uh, uh, NDE prove? Uh, absolutely nothing, um, unless I wasn't clear on that. Absolutely nothing. The experience is real, but it is not necessarily true. Uh, how many experiences have we had that were real but not true? Experiences do not validate truth or proof. And so, yes, they're very, very real, uh, but they're not necessarily true. In your life, I can certainly testify in my life that I have gone through uh, many uh, experiences, some under uh, medical care, where I had wild experiences and wild memories, uh, but uh, they were not true. Now, ultimately, uh, what does the Bible say about this? Well, we want to be reminded that there are more than 10 resurrection experiences recorded in the Bible, but these are not near-death experiences. You, you kind of have uh, three clusters of these. The Elijah, Elisha period, uh, the period of Jesus and the Gospels, and then in the ministry, early ministry of Peter and of Paul. So now a lot of Christians want to point to 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 4 as a near-death experience. But notice Paul clearly states, but I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. And so what he was experiencing was a vision or a revelation. He's not even quite sure. Talks about being caught up to the third heaven, whether he was in the body or out of the body. But this is the exception to the norm or the rule. And the exception proves the norm and the rule. It does not set a new rule. Uh, the parable, Luke chapter 16, and I put two question marks there because it's debated whether uh, it's a parable. Uh, just prior in this chapter, <clears throat> it says that Jesus was teaching parables, so I'm going to take it as a parable, but it's a parable, uh, a teaching from Jesus that reflects uh, reality and that uh, those of faith are uh, go to Abraham's bosom until uh, the great uh, rapture and and, re and uh, resurrection, and that the rich unbeliever goes to a, a place of uh, torment. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 8, uh, I think that this is uh, very succinct and to the point. 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Uh, when we are absent from the body, when we die, uh, then we are present with the Lord. Uh, similarly, Jesus said to the thief on the cross, this day you will be with me in paradise. So, uh, in conclusion, many people have made much money claiming to visit either heaven or hell. And a lot of money to be made on both sides. A lot of claims to be made on both sides. Uh, the only source of absolute true truth is the scriptures. The scriptures clearly say that near-death experiences 
are simply experiences, probably a combination of a medical or uh, chemical influences that have created these. They're very, very real, but they are not the basis of truth. So uh, you tell me uh, what you know, Dr. John McLean at gmail.com, but don't fall for it. Uh, the Bible tells us about heaven, it tells us about hell, and uh, to trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our personal sins is then to be in a place where you are absent from the body, you are present with the Lord.